On this trip through the digestive system, we will study digestion, the enzymatic breakdown of food to components that can be absorbed, and absorption, the movement of nutrients, salts, and water across the GI epithelium into blood or lymph. Your goals for learning are to describe the action of the digestive enzymes and bile salts, to describe transepithelial transport of monosaccharides and amino acids, to explain the role of bile salts as emulsifiers essential to digestion and absorption of fat. Here's what you need to know. The chemical structure of major nutrients. How pH affects enzyme activity. How molecules diffuse across membranes. How carriers transport molecules across membranes. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. Click the food to begin. Ingested food is first broken down mechanically into pieces that can be swallowed, then into small particles that can pass out of the stomach into the small intestine. Click the small particles. Small particles contain the major nutrients in our diet, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Enzymes digest small particles into components that can be absorbed. In this topic, we will study the enzymes that digest each of these major nutrients. Click carbohydrates to study their digestion. The most abundant dietary carbohydrates are starch and the three disaccharides, sucrose or table sugar, lactose or milk sugar, and maltose, or grain sugar. Carbohydrates are built from monosaccharides and must be digested to their component monosaccharides so they can be absorbed. In our representative molecules, geometric symbols represent single monosaccharides. Starch is digested to glucose. Sucrose is digested to glucose and fructose. Lactose is digested to glucose and galactose. Maltose is digested to glucose. Click Protein to study its digestion. Proteins are digested to amino acids and small peptide chains of two or three amino acids. In our representative protein, each circle represents a single amino acid. Click Fat to study its digestion. Most dietary fat consists of triglycerides. Triglycerides are digested to monoglycerides and free fatty acids. In our representative triglyceride, the three circles represent the carbons of the glycerol backbone and the picket fences represent fatty acids. Remember that nonpolar products of digestion can be absorbed across the intestinal epithelium by simple diffusion, a passive process. In general, Polar substances are absorbed by carrier-mediated transport. Carrier-mediated transport may be active, requiring the energy of ATP, or passive, relying on the concentration gradient of the substance being absorbed. Plant starch and glycogen, animal starch, are the most abundant dietary carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are long polymers of glucose. Digestion of starch begins in the mouth with salivary amylase, which is maximally active at about pH 7. Drag starch to amylase to begin.
Amylase breaks starch down to the disaccharide maltose, to fragments of three glucose molecules called maltotriose, and to small branched fragments called limit dextrins. In our illustration, each hexagon represents a glucose molecule. The hexagons at branch points represent glucose-glucose links that are not hydrolyzed by amylase. Click a digestion product to continue. Amylase continues to work in the stomach until food is mixed with gastric juice and acidified. Acid denatures amylase. In the stomach, pepsin begins the digestion of protein. Proteins are long polymers of amino acids. Pepsin is the only major digestive enzyme that is maximally active at acidic pH. Drag the protein to pepsin to begin. Pepsin cleaves proteins at bonds between the amino acids tyrosine and phenylalanine, producing peptide fragments and a small amount of individual amino acids. In this illustration, each circle represents an amino acid. Click a peptide to continue. Pepsin is active only in the stomach. When chyme is neutralized in the duodenum, pepsin is denatured. Most digestion and almost all absorption occurs in the small intestine. The pancreas supplies the digestive enzymes for most foodstuffs. Neither salivary amylase nor pepsin is essential for digestion. Pancreatic enzymes alone are adequate to digest carbohydrates and protein. There is little digestion of fat until it reaches the small intestine. Pancreatic lipase is essential for fat digestion. Without it, malabsorption of fat occurs. Humans lack digestive enzymes for the plant polysaccharide cellulose and some other complex carbohydrates. Drag a vegetable to the intestines. Vegetables and fruits are good sources of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. The indigestible polysaccharides contained in vegetables and fruits make up dietary fiber. Fiber increases bulk of the stool and promotes its timely movement through the colon. Click the intestine to observe salt and water absorption. Most of the salt and water that enter the GI tract are absorbed in the small intestine. Salt and water may be absorbed by transcellular transport through intestinal epithelial cells or by paracellular transport through leaky tight junctions between cells. Paracellular transport is passive and keeps the total osmolarity of the intestinal contents similar to the osmolarity of blood plasma. Transcellular transport of fluid depends on active transport of sodium. Sodium-potassium pumps in the basolateral membrane pump sodium out of intestinal epithelial cells to keep the intracellular concentration of sodium low and to elevate the concentration of sodium in the interstitial fluid. Sodium enters epithelial cells at the luminal surface co-transported with glucose or amino acids through sodium ion channels and on several other transporters moving down its electrochemical gradient. Basically, chloride follows sodium and the osmotic pressure generated by the movements of salt and other solutes into the interstitial space causes water to follow by osmosis. These transport mechanisms are similar to salt and water transport mechanisms in the proximal tubule of the kidney and may be reviewed in the urinary system module. The small intestine has the capacity to absorb more food than is usually ingested at one time. Increased intake causes increased absorptive capacity. It is almost impossible to exceed the absorptive capacity of the small intestine. We will study absorption of the end products of digestion of the major nutrients on the next pages. The carbohydrates that enter the small intestine for digestion include starch, its breakdown products from salivary amylase digestion, and the dietary disaccharides, sucrose, table sugar, lactose, milk sugar, and maltose, grain sugar. Drag starch to amylase to begin. Pancreatic amylase continues the breakdown of starch in the lumen. It is identical to salivary amylase and maximally active at about pH 7. 
Since only monosaccharides are absorbed, the breakdown products of starch and the disaccharides must be digested further. Brush border enzymes accomplish this job. Click an epithelial cell to continue.